Kyle Nathaniel Rackley was delivered on December 19th, 2012. He wasn't alive. Losing a child is deeply painful, but there's also hope and joy. You just have to see the bigger picture. In early June of 2012, we found out we were expecting. After I had already had two miscarriages that year, um, I was only cautiously optimistic. We waited until the first trimester had passed and we heard the heartbeat for the first time. And at that point, we felt like it was safe to get excited. We told our family and our friends and we're just really enjoying the next several days being completely happy with the blessing God had given us after our two difficult losses. That weekend, we were at a retreat uh, with the company that I work for, and Kim started showing symptoms of miscarrying. She knew what these were like because we had already been through two this year. I was very angry. What I thought I was watching happen to yet another child was not at all what I had thought God had taught us about the gift of children. I was cold. I didn't have any hope or joy or peace. Um, we went to the doctor the next morning for an ultrasound and I was totally prepared as best as I could be to see what I assumed would be a lifeless body on the screen. Instead, what we saw was a beating heart and arms and legs fluttering around. And we saw that our baby was alive. We were just elated. We were beside ourselves. A moment later, the ultrasound technician noticed something else. Uh, there was this line along the back of Kyle, this outline. Uh, to us, that meant nothing. But to them, that meant there was severe swelling, which was the sign of a major genetic defect. They went on to tell us the baby probably had trisomy 18, that there was no reason that the baby should even still be alive in the womb, that it probably was not going to uh, make it another week or two. The heart would just stop beating. We were just lost uh, emotionally. People began to send us cards and gifts and meals, um, but they also brought lots of words from scripture, words of hope, like, I, God, will never leave you or forsake you, um, words of joy and peace, like, don't be anxious for anything, pray about everything, and then the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. And as I heard those words, from people all over the place, I began to realize that perhaps it was my heart that was broken and needed to be fixed and not God's words. Our baby was still alive and he shouldn't have been. So we knew we were holding something really special. We decided to celebrate um, every week. We called a bonus week that we weren't supposed to have, but we had been given. We snapped a photo and um, I'd, I'd already been kind of journaling online on my blog about the pregnancy, so I decided to keep that going, and we began to hear from people. People were contacting us about how they were praying for us and about how our little baby's story was encouraging them. And knowing that our baby was having an impact in others' trials was in turn encouraging me and giving me hope. The King of Heaven, the Great I Am, He is your Shepherd, little Lamb. He made the stars and oceans blue but says that none compare with you you are his treasure
treasure and great prize. He knows your name. He made your eyes. He is your shepherd, little lamb. The King of Heaven. Weeks went by, and not only did we see uh, that heart keep ticking, but our baby was growing, and the baby was much smaller than other babies uh, its size, but it was still growth, and we will take that. And as the baby continued to grow, we found out we were having a son, and we named him Kyle Nathaniel, which actually has two potential meanings. It means either a gift straight from God, or a gift straight to God. And for us, that was a fitting and blessed name. One of the challenges that we were facing was how do we explain what's going on to our girls? They were falling in love with their baby brother, but uh, they didn't really fully understand everything that was happening. We took them with us to the ultrasounds. They were able to uh, play with him by tickling mommy's tummy. The girls loved it. They even wanted to get their own ultrasounds. They would fight over it. Kimmy was convinced that she had a baby Kyle in her belly too. Chloe loved playing doctor at the office. She would sit down at the desk, get out her notepad, and ask us very important questions like, what is Kyle's favorite color? and uh, what is his favorite animal. Back at home, the girls would do different things to try to spend time uh, with him. Cammie would take finger puppets and would uh, play, uh, do puppet shows uh, on mommy's tummy. And Chloe would take mommy's phone and put it to mommy's tummy and watch movies with the baby. She would always try to watch boy movies. She wouldn't subject him to Cinderella or Tinkerbell and all the other girl stuff. The girls were very clingy to Kim. They wanted to stay close to her at all times and they were very protective of their brother even though they hadn't seen him outside of the ultrasounds. We knew God was doing some wonderful things in our hearts and we wanted them to be able to see that happen. We made some bears. Um, they were even able to put his the baby's heartbeat inside the bear and those girls love their bears now. They even made one for Kyle so um, as Chloe said so he wouldn't be scared when he went to heaven. It was getting close to Christmas time and we were getting excited, but we were also getting a little antsy because we knew that we were getting very close to the end of our time with Kyle. The last time we saw him, it was only for a few minutes, but it was precious. He just snuggled and cozied up against his mommy. He was just completely happy. He seemed warm and content and it was a great way
for us to remember him. That Sunday, uh, Kim wasn't feeling Kyle move. Uh, everything was just still. And there's been long periods of time where we haven't felt him move before. But nothing was happening, and we kept searching for something, and we would try to do things like drink ice cold water. Nothing was really changing. Um, we kind of had a bad feeling. The next day, we went to the doctor, and as soon as the ultrasound uh, turned on, we saw him, and Kyle's heart had stopped beating. People gave us gifts, even people we don't know. They knitted blankets, they knitted hats and cloth diapers, uh, things for Kyle to wear uh, after he was delivered. It just helped lift us from what was kind of the very bottom of the pit and gave us enough strength to keep going. Kyle Nathaniel Rackley was delivered on December 19th, 2012. He was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So many people prayed for a miracle in our son's life. And even now I have people ask me, why didn't God do that miracle? And I tell them he did. He did do a miracle. He did one in our hearts. After we left the hospital, we knew we had a lot to do to get ready for the funeral. And each of us tried to figure out our own way of saying goodbye to Kyle. Chloe wrote him a letter. Kyle's body was buried on December 22nd, 2012. The little guy who'd taught us so much about joy and suffering wasn't with us anymore. And while we'll miss him terribly, we know we'll see him again when we see him with Jesus. <laughs>